Hi guys, and we're in Sweden to drive the brand new Nissan Ariya. This is an all new car. This is a very important car for Nissan because Nissan, of course, as you will know, made the Nissan Leaf. That was um, back in 2010 and it became one of the world's best selling EVs. It's a significant milestone for a manufacturer in the EV segment. This is Nissan EV Take Two. This is their first, well, this is their second fully electric car. It's their first SUV that is fully electric. It's completely new, completely new platform. There's even a new battery setup in this car. It's now liquid cool compared to the air cool batteries that were in the Nissan Leaf. Now this thing looks futuristic. It looks amazing. I love the thin headlights, the graphic elements on here. There's little motifs and stuff around the car and the contouring is fabulous, especially in these brighter colors. I urge you not to get it into dark colors. Get it in these bright colors because it really shows up the special features of these things. Now prices for these are starting from around 43,000 pounds up to uh, over 50 grand. I'll put all the specs and everything on the screen because I'm at an event, so uh, it'll be easier to do it that way. Now, initially we will get them in three basic models, if you like, there's two trim levels. They're all well equipped, they're all well kitted out. They all come with lots and lots of gadgets. Um, we'll go through some of that when we get inside the car. There's a two-wheel drive, i.e. front-wheel drive car, uh, 63 kilowatt, zero to, six, zero to 60 miles per hour, zero to 100 kilometers per hour. It's about seven and a half seconds on these ones. Then you get the E-Force one, and that's a little bit more powerful. It's about 280 brake horsepower. That's twin motor, motor on the front, motor on the back. And that one puts out about, two, well, like I said, 280 horsepower, and it will do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in about 5.7 seconds. So really looking forward to trying this car. This is a real step up for Nissan. This is basically their next generation of electric vehicles. So we'll take a look at the boot. We'll look at the practicality. We'll look at the space in the rear and in the front. And of course, we'll take it for a drive. So let's have a look at the boot. I gotta say, it's really nice in this copper. If you wanna get one, get one in a contrasting color because the features of the car really stand out. And it's got quite a bluff rear end. It's got a real presence about it. This one, of course, is power assisted uh, tailgate on this one. And it opens up to a real quite a large boot, actually, with split folding 60-40 rear seats. Looks like a high floor, but it does the same thing that the Qashqai does, where it has that split folding secondary floor panel. So you can take these out and then you get a little bit more space down there. This one at the moment is full of cables and stuff like that. Obviously, it's a plug in electric hybrid. Underneath there, you've got compartments for tools and stuff like that as well. Uh, there's two little compartments on each side, like bins really, you would say, on each side of the cabin with straps as well. There's hooks, there's lights. Um, I don't see a power supply in this particular model unless it's, oh, there could be one there. So that's pretty handy. I think it's pretty practical. Maybe not quite as tall as you might be expecting, but again, you can remove the floor and it gives you a bit more space. So what's it like in the rear? Let's check that out. Oh, wow. Check it out. They call this the lounge. It's like a Japanese lounge is what the interior of this car is meant to be. And already I'm kind of feeling it. I'm very laid back, as you may have noticed. And uh, look at these incredible patterns on here. There's a name for these. I'll give you that in a minute. <laughs> but it's here, it's here. The trim spec and the trimming and the way that it's all done is actually really, really good. This is like a canvas material here with leather. So it's a leather canvas combination with a deep pocket down here quite a tight thing there now the foot room is a bit tight now this driving seat obviously is set for my driving position six foot two quite tall have it a little bit on its lower setting um, and so the feet are, are sort of locked in there so they're quite tight but if you do that that's no problem at all but having said that no issues with the knees and no issues with the shins now of course one of the reasons for that is of course the battery is under the floor uh, brings the center of gravity down, wheels at each corner um, because of the way that it's designed. It's completely new, like I said. So the floor is one is com completely clean here. So you can easily have three people sitting across here. The only thing is this center console can actually move. It slides back and forth. And if you put it at its rear settings, it moves by 15 centimeters. So it would take some of this space here for the third passenger. But by and large, I would say it's actually quite comfortable even for three passengers to sit here. And the third passenger might, well, I don't know, maybe a little bit more room there. Now back here, you have have the heated seats and two USBs, a regular one and a USB-C. So that's actually quite handy, but I guess the heated seats are for the two passengers rather than for the third one. You do get an armrest, 
if you are only two people in the car um, with the uh, cup holders and uh, isofix child seat anchor points and again this is kind of a suede inset to otherwise a leather seat so again really nicely designed really nicely laid out big roof here and so quite airy despite a very thick c pillar but still quite a spacious airy feeling maybe a little bit of intrusion on the headroom just because of the tapered roof line but generally not a problem very comfortable very nice very relaxed back here what is what is it like in the front let's find out wow this is futuristic check it out i mean that is massive i think the seat actually was further back than i was saying because i feel quite stretched back let's turn it on check this out um and i have heads up display as well as these 2.3 uh two 12.3 inch screens um nissan intelligent mobility oh and the stereo's on i knew it was on and you've got heads up display as well if you can just make out Check this out, massive screen here, but look at this. Look at this uh, empty area here and the center console. Don't know why it's talking. Whoa, <laughs> um, uh, it really wants to play the music, doesn't it? Uh, here you have wireless charger. You've got here, you've got um, uh, the, the, the um, cup holders with uh, you know this, this kind of um, springy holders, but you can actually just cover the whole thing up and this kind of brushed wood effect now this wood is extraordinary because you've got the buttons right here for the drive modes and you know they're haptic now this is interesting so if i press open here there's a secret compartment that comes out look at this this is where you hide your cash and stuff quite a deep bin down there and there you go and then to close it again i would say it's secret except for the fact that the buttons are in a really prominent position which are right here right next to the drive modes which is significant right um it, it is on is it on it is on so uh why am i not getting look at the music it makes wow this is, makes a real sort of event doesn't it of everything you do have a glove box here which is like that um and then you've got this uh flap this kind of fin that goes all the way across the hides events here and here there is your volume control and your stereo control hazard lights this is your big screen which is kind of curved here very easy very straightforward to use and you have a digital and normal mirror as well this thing here this whole console down here you've got usb uh a regular usb and you've got a usb c and another i think that's a power supply i think that's a compartment can't quite make out from this angle i think that's another compartment down there and this thing moves so there you go so there you as you can see right okay that's on its forward setting and that's now on its rearmost setting as you can see it's encroaching on some of the leg room back there but if you move it back so now i can really see um what this is i still can't make it out anyway i was going to tell you what this pattern was which you can see all across the doors in the middle here i'm assuming that's a speaker um look at the pedals are offset actually they are offset because the accelerator is well off to the right over there but it does give you a lot of space for your leg for left foot there this huge space down here is really interesting very well spec cars as i mentioned and the name of this pattern which i was going to give you is uh, Kumiko Kumiko patterns throughout the car looks amazing I mean it's just look at this is this is that material this is this wood which again the haptic feedback buttons that are embedded in for the uh, aircon right there and then you've got the screen the screen of course is touch as well um, home screen and all the rest of it all comes up there it's quite an extraordinary place to be it really is what's it like to drive let's find out so here we are in the Nissan Aria and literally this is my first time driving it. I've just driven it away from the hotel. Now it's got the modes that you would expect. So it's got the driving modes. Um, let's go through them. We have sport, standard and eco. So let's just kick it off in standard. We'll stick with that one for now. We've also got uh, e-pedal mode. So the e-pedal mode I've gone into because that's the one pedal mode. And uh, it's not, yeah, it's just that the, when you lift off completely, it's a little bit abrupt in how the braking comes in. So it could be a little bit more linear, but I think it just takes a little bit we're getting used to the navigation will cut in because we're following a route at the moment so don't mind that um we literally have just started off from the hotel so this car has 50 50 weight distribution now the spec that we're in right now is the um 215 horsepower um zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.5 seconds so this is the entry level in terms of the powertrain um so this is this is a, a the sort of spec that most people would get one of the interesting things that they said in the presentation earlier is that it's geared up for 
longer drives. So the sat nav, the intelligent sat nav, is set up in such a way that it kind of works out your route, it works out where you should be charging, but it also looks at the status of the chargers. So it looks at whether the chargers are okay to use, whether they're the right ones, whether you can go in there, and it will kind of, it'll reroute you to find the right places for you to charge and, and to, to basically get the best out of your longer journey. So we're into a bit of motorway stretch now. Now this thing does have Pro Pilot, which is kind of like the autopilot system that sort of takes care of everything for you. I'm not going to try it on this run because we're on a media drive. We don't have a lot of time with the car, so it's, I want to get to know the system before I try it and it's difficult to understand exactly how to do it. Although it's all here in front of me. I mean, I just scroll, scroll through this buttons on the left spoke of the steering wheel and I can go through and it's telling me the charge time and all the other information is right there in front of me. But yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, it'd be good to try it on a longer run to see how that works. It also has automatic parking as well. So, you know, it'll find a spot and it'll park the car for you. So it'll do all of that stuff. So it's got all of those features as you'd expect from a modern EV, all the gadgets and gizmos and all of those new tech features and the driver assistance, driver aid features that you'd expect are all present and correct. Now that we're on the motorway, we can experience a smoother ride. Um, Obviously, the roads on the motorway are smoother, so you you don't feel any any fidgetiness on this uh, on this ride at all. Cruises very well. I've still got it on e-power mode, but as long as you keep a consistency of throttle, then it's fine. Although, really, I wouldn't recommend the e-pedal e for the motorway because when you lift off, it does suddenly start to brake, which which could catch people out behind you. I'm keeping it in standard mode for now because really on the motorway um, that it seems to be the right one. Um, but generally, it's uh, it's pretty smooth in acceleration. Now this thing, it's it's not a. I wouldn't say it's like punchy initially. Not not at this sort of speed, but you know it's quite linear in the term in the way the torque is delivered and the way that the the throttle responds. So it's kind of what you would expect. It'd be interesting to try it later on to see what it does under full acceleration and, and stuff like that. The steering is actually very nicely weighted. It's I, I feel that it's weightened up a little bit now that we're at this sort of speed, which is a good thing, of course. Um, but it's quite responsive so far. It's been pretty good. It's about what you would expect. But overall, it's a fairly easy, nice cruising experience. Exactly the sort of thing that you'd be looking for in an EV that is designed actually to do longer distances. Whilst we're on the motorway, it's a good opportunity to look at the driving position and the visibility all around. Visibility generally at the front is no problem at all. And you've got these big wing mirrors as well. Um, it has a digital mirror. So it's one of those mirrors again where, you know, if you flick the button up, it goes entirely digital. These are not my favorite things, I've got to be honest with you. But actually this one's not so bad and it's placed far enough from me in that it, I don't have that much of an issue focusing, but I am seeing some reflection on it. So um, it's maybe not as clear, but again, you get a much wider view uh, compared to how you would do normally because normally the rear window is quite tight and so therefore it constricts the view a little bit. If you go onto the digital, you're seeing a lot more behind you. Now, in terms of the seating position, it's fine. I'm struggling a little bit with the back, so it's just I keep adjusting. It's power seats, obviously. So I keep adjusting the backrest to try and get the right angle for me. Um, but for some reason, I'm just struggling to find that. The interesting thing about I have been able to adjust the steering. It is reach and rake adjustable um, powered, so that's quite handy. The interesting thing about this car is as you're sitting here, it's very spacious, A, because of the panoramic roof. It gives you that feeling of airiness in the cabin, but also the fact that it's got this kind of through space here in the middle because we've got this console that moves back and forth. Um, I think I'm supposed to be in this lane. Um, but it generally it feels very uh, spacious here at the front because of the way it's designed and it has this kind of space here around your feet as well. So you get a sense of real space in this car um, which is replicated throughout the cabin. So they've done a great job with making you feel like you're sitting in a lounge like they say which is what you know they're trying to achieve here. So we're on some slightly nicer roads now. I'm going to switch it up into sports mode, although we're not doing a lot of speed at the moment. Um, but we're a little bit twisty. Now immediately I did see, I did feel a response from switching it into sport. It was actually quite pronounced. Slight improvement in the throttle response, but also um, I felt the steering tighten up as well. The steering definitely tightened up there. So that's which is kind of what you would like with, the, with sports mode, isn't it? So just moving on now, now we're on some bumpier roads and I did find the ride is actually very good in this car with electric cars. I've often said in the past where um, I feel that they're a little bit rigid and fidgety. Now on this one actually I find it to be quite smooth. They're very well damped, so it's very well controlled. Obviously, you know, they put uh, what 15 years of learning uh, tech about how to do electric cars into this you know, second version of their all-electric EV from Nissan. 
So you can understand that they've uh, applied some of what they've learned to this car and it shows. Now we are pushing it around some corners a little bit now. It's fairly neutral in its attitude. We're not going um, uh, particularly fast, but we're able to use the throttle a little bit more. Okay, now we're going, we're going some. Um, and the braking again, uh, I'm still keeping it in e-pedal mode. So I'm actually uh, able to not need to use the brake pedal uh, too much, even in this situation, but it's proving to be quite faithful. The steering weighting is, uh, is actually really nice at this point um, and seems to be uh, quite accurate in terms of responses. Again, we're not talking sports car or anything like that, but we're talking a reasonable level of engagement um, should you be looking for it. But having said that, we're not, um, we're, we're hustling now a little bit, so it's not too bad. The acceleration isn't bad. I mean, it, this one is a 7.5 seconds, um, but it does feel there is, a, I think there's an artificial sound as well that they've uh, introduced into it. So for example, if we just punch it now, yeah, you can, and I just got a scrabbling of the wheels there as well, so that delivery of torque can catch out a little bit, but you know, generally it's it's not a problem, and it's, I wouldn't say understeer, it's just a slight tangent because it's as the front wheels just struggle for grip there a little bit. But quite smooth flowing now, uh, good, good responses. So there you go, we've established that this is a really good car to drive around the city, it's a good car to cruise on the motorway. And once she stops talking, we can also confirm that it's a good car <laughs> to make your passengers sick if you want to throw them around as well. <laughs> but actually, with all the space in the back, they're in pretty good shape, I reckon. But overall, it's very good. I think that, you know, you know, the fact that Nissan had such a big hit with the Leaf, the second thing that they were going to do was always going to be uh, better, wasn't it? Whether it's a game changer like the Leaf was, we're not sure. Time will tell. But I think certainly it'll become one of the major players in the segment for sure. And uh, I think a lot of the existing uh, manufacturers that are now entering the market a little bit later perhaps than Nissan um, need to have a good long look at this car. Uh, but certainly one to check out. Uh, be in showrooms from next month in fact, or July if you're watching this in July, or actually you probably are. So they're in showrooms now, so you should be able to get test drives and stuff. Don't ask about deliveries. <laughs> That's probably going to take a while. But yeah, worth checking out. Let me know what you think of the Aria. I'd love to hear your comments about this car. I'm actually quite enjoying the car now in this, in this environment. And uh, yeah, catch you guys again in the next video. A big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at Air Technic who are top tier sponsors of Brown Car Guy. Check them out at Air Technic Co UK for exhausts, brakes, suspension and body kits. Plus our other major sponsor, Nayajan Solutions. Much appreciation also to tier 4 sponsors, Muhammad Ali Humaid, Tom Conway Gordon and Reza Adil. And of course all these other guys who supporting on Patreon. Brown Car Guy is eternally grateful. Hey, think about joining them over at Patreon.com Brown Car Guy. If you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and website. Plus follow on social media by searching for Brown Car Guy.